there we go we're recording hello welcome good evening uh i'm phil this is discover tai chi for limb power uh for people who are watching later hello as well uh parish notices are that i had a little chat with emma emma newman at limb power um just about how things are going and also how we can try and maybe grow our little group um so we're going to be trying to be a little bit more active in promoting the group in various forms so yeah let's see how we go over the summer um right let's get started i'm thinking eight strands of brocade to get us moving or at least we'll start there um okay let's do that take your glasses off phil okay seated standing you know the rules uh, two hands hold the sky here you go you're outside helen your chance to hold the blue sky as we push up fab and try and have this sense of relaxation as we bring the hands down so as we push up we do want to have a bit of a sense of pushing up and holding the sky, but then we want this complete relaxation or song as it's called. So we push up as a sense of holding and then letting go. If you feel that it fits with you, you can have an in breath as you push up and then an out breath on the down. Some of you may have come across the kind of square breathing or the four second kind of sequence of breathing where you do four seconds in, a four second pause, a four second out breath, and then a four second pause. Again, movements like this can sometimes lend themselves nicely. I'm not a fan of counting rigidly. I like to have a sense of if I'm going to do an in-breath, it just feels natural. Maybe a little pause, then let the breath go. But again, I'm going to move within a comfortable time before coming back to that in-breath. So again, that's maybe just my personal proclivity on that. It can work nicely. And as always, we can just focus on the movement and just let our breathing take care of itself because it does that jolly well. There you go. Let's just have a little kick and a shake after that one. Uh, time to release some arrows so here. We need to get a wider base or as wide as we can. And we're going to shoot an arrow off to my left or your left, hopefully. So that means right hand on the outside. Draw your bowstring and push into the bow. Let the arrow fly. Balance out the movement. And then once again, a sense of relaxation as we begin to come into position draw the bow now left hand on the bowstring right hand pushing let the arrow fly and we'll just get into a nice rhythm from one side to the other releasing arrows as we go Once again, the breath can come in as we draw the bow. And that might take about four seconds and then we just let it fly as the out breath arrives. Same on the other side. Could be an in breath, could be a little pause and then we let the breath go and that's when the arrow releases man maybe four seconds or so to do the down movement as i say i'm not a great fan of counting because to be honest our bodies don't really know numbers in terms of seconds or minutes so again i'll 
I would rather you go by feel and what feels comfortable for you rather than an arbitrary number. Okay, I'm going to do one more on each side. We're doing quite a few, aren't we, of these, but it's quite nice just to get into a rhythm. Last one. Lots of arrows. Off they go. Once again, a little kick and a shake, whether we're seated or standing. And we're into our third movement. And that's part the earth from the sky. Similar to two hands hold the sky, uh, at least with one hand pushing up. Try to have this sense that the spine is being encouraged to lengthen every time we do our push. And then let everything relax again as we come back. Doesn't matter which hand is on top with our beach ball. Bottom hand comes up. And then we push up and down in this line. And there's a sense of elongating the spine and then bringing my hands back together. I'm sorry, my hand disappears at the top of the frame, but it's pushing upwards as I do so. So once again, we'll do a few of these. Again, I don't count reps. Body has no idea what reps are. <laughs> Again, it could be an in breath, if you wish, as we expand, and then an out breath as we let everything come back. It's a bit like a, an expanding sphere, like a big balloon. Expanding and then gently letting air of that balloon and everything comes back together again before once more we inflate and expand. So more often than not, we just think in terms of pushing up and pushing down. But if you think of it as of expansion, then we can have this sense of being within a sphere and therefore that sphere expands and we expand in all directions, not just up and down, but forwards, backwards, to the sides, and then it all kind of comes back together. So if that helps with that idea of, it, of expansion and contraction, and if the breath fits nicely and comfortably within those movements, then feel free to put all of that into this exercise. I'm going to do one more. Come back. And then relax. Once again, I'm going to have a little kick and a shake and <clears throat> move into our Next movement, why is out? Uh, I'm going to do this as a little three-stage progression. Here's our first easily remembered version of just a look and a lift of the hands, and then a return, and then a look and a lift as we go to the opposite side. It doesn't matter which side you started with. And again, we're looking to be nicely balanced all the way through the movement. And we're just rotating around the spine like an axis. Once again, the breath has an opportunity to come in as we lift the breath in and a breath out as we drop hands and turn back. If again, it feels right for you. You may choose to just bring the breath in, in any exercise for just an occasion. And then just focus on the movement for a little while and then bring the breath in again for another occasion. There's no rules, which I hope is quite nice. 
Okay, I'm going to do one more to one side. This is my left side. Don't worry if we're in sync. So that was version one. Once again, little kick and a shake. And second version, both hands gesture in the same direction. Okay, so here we go. Both hands gesturing, lifting lightly to the right. Back we come, same to the left. So let's again, just get into a nice gentle rhythm with that movement. Option to bring the breath in if you wish. Very nice. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to do one more to each side. <coughs> Excellent. So third progression. If you think about it, <coughs> that second progression that we've just done, is like a gentle version of gazing at the moon from Shibashi, where we sweep the hands further upwards and there's a bit more of a twist and a spiral rotation to the whole of the body. And it just kind of feels that it fits quite nicely. So I'm inviting you to do that now. So we're gazing at the moon. So now we're gesturing upwards Letting the hands sweep down and then up to the opposite side. Again, doesn't matter which side you start on. Once again, see if you can manage your balance so that you're rotating around the spine. And letting the hands feel heavy as we sweep them from one side and then to the other. And I don't necessarily breathe in rhythm with this movement. Well, I guess you could, but sometimes it's just nice to focus on balance and a smooth sweep from one side to the other. Okay. I'm going to do one more. Again, don't worry about being in sync. <clears throat> there we go. Halfway. Next two movements. These bigger movements of a torso. So we're aiming, once again, whether we're seated or standing, to have a wider stance. As much as you can manage... Uh, Again, each person will be different. So again, you do you, okay? And hands can be resting on the hips or tops of the thighs. That gives you a bit more support because you can press into the thighs as we go through the movement. So again, you've got options. I'll go hands on hips for the first few and maybe change as we go around. I'm turning to my right, a little bit of weight shift in that direction and a little duck under to the left. I'm only ducking under a little bit before coming upright. And then I'm doing the same by returning left to right, a little dick duck under, excuse me. And once again, we just get into the rhythm of that movement. No prizes for bendy boys or bendy boys, bendy boys or bendy girls, excuse me. Um, Move comfortably, easily. Try to find the easy way to perform this movement. It will be tricky for some people. And sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. Sometimes doing it seated is a good option. 
Again, I don't necessarily think about the breath in any way with this movement. You've got enough to think about and manage just being stable and comfortable as we go from one side to the other. If at any point you're now feeling dizzy or you've just had enough, again, we don't count reps. We're not prescriptive. You do as many as you feel. I'm going to do one more <clears throat> before coming, bringing those feet in, having a kick and shake like so. Okay. Holding the feet, that's what it's called. But again, we don't have to. We can go as far as we feel. We start off with a box. Could be filled with a helium balloon. So the box lifts up. We bring the hands on top. Bring that box down. Nice and steady. Hands come onto the backs of the thighs. And then we're hinging at the hips. We're taking a bow. The hands slide down the thighs. Maybe get to the knees. Come around to the front and then just come back upright again. Let the hands rest on the thighs. Once again, here's our box. Once again, it's another movement where I focus purely on the movement and balance. Not so worried about the breath. Hips go back. Down we go. We're not looking for a stretch. We're just looking to move comfortably. Down we go. If it does feel okay for you, you could have this big in breath as we lift because it helps for rib cage expand. And then you could just let that breath go as we bring the hands down. And maybe just breathe very comfortably as we do the hip hinge and the bow. Just like so. I'm going to go a couple more times. Again, not counting reps. Not interested in numbers. I'm just going by feel. One more time. Excellent. Once again, that will kick and a shake. Okay. That's those two bigger movements out the way. Let's go to pull the boat, our familiar movement of imagining we're at a harbour side or the seaside or a lakeside. You've got free reign to choose some location where there's a boat out on the water. And the more that you can picture the scene, the sights, sounds and sensations, the better. So... Wider stance, if you sat down and you can adopt a wider stance even sat down, so much the better. Bring the hands in, loose little fists, reach out with any hand you wish to start. Wrap the hand around our imaginary rope and begin to pull your imaginary boat toward you. Again, see if you can let the shoulders Rotate around the spine. And that you've got this alternation from one hand smoothly pulling in as the other hand is reaching out. So that they work together rather than as two separate limbs. They're connected via the shoulder girdle. And we're rotating around the spine like an axis. 
all the while we're picturing the scene in which we've placed ourselves and again we just breathe very comfortably with the movement as we wish and we're just not bothered about how many pulls we do we're just picturing the boat drawing nearer with every pull and we're trying to cause as little disturbance to the scene in which we find ourselves as we do so. And again, as we begin to get into that rhythm, you can perhaps really tune into the shoulder muscles and the joints as we make each successive pull. But I can't keep you here all day so i'm going to suggest two more pulls one with each arm there's the first one there's the last one so bring it in slowly bring that boat to shore <clears throat> okay so that was our penultimate movement in eight strands of brocade um swapping out um the last movement it's a bit problematic, particularly for those of us with lower limb amputations. Uh, it's not easy to lift your weight and stand on the balls of your feet <laughs> with a prosthetic foot or limb. So I'm going to bring back our little hip hinge and bow. Uh, only this time, feet can be closer together. We're going to do flying fox. So flying fox goes like this. Bring the hands up and around and imagine that we come on top of a very big medicine ball as a sense of resistance and pressure. And then we take the hands back out again, just to out kind of extend the hands and arms. Here I go, I'm taking a bow, turning the palms over so they face upwards, just hinging at the hips and my hands push up to the ceiling we make a little kind of flying v shape and then slowly slowly come back up flying fox should we have another go here we go could be a breath in on this one a breath out if you feel comfortable doing that and then i do focus really I'm just maintaining balance. So I'm not thinking about the breathing now. I'm just maintaining stability as I take a bow, pushing the palms away, and then coming back upright. So again, you could just focus on the movement all the way through, but there is an opportunity to fit the breath in if you wish in these early movements. And then we just take a bow. Hips go back, head goes forward, and we just keep a very neutral spine. Not looking for a stretch, just looking to maintain stability and balance while moving through that range of motion, which again can be a challenge. So I appreciate that it's a challenge, but sometimes it's worthwhile doing. Okay, I'm going to do one more because time marches ever onward. Last one, take a bow. Fab, once again, a little kick in the shape. So that's our eight strands of brocade with some variations and progressions. Um, let me sit down and come a bit closer as we draw towards the end. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to do, what shall we do? Let's do four directions now where we keep a nice stable base, whether we're seated or standing, and we simply push 
in four directions. Uh, unlike other times where we've done this, uh, we'll see if we can have a little focus on the breath. So I'm not going to be asking you to put lots of effort into the push. We'll see if we can maintain more of our attention on the breath. For now, though, let's just get into the movement where we push forwards, first of all. Nice and slowly. <clears throat> just let the hands relax and then pick them up for our second push, this time out to the sides. And again, just let the hands completely relax. Begin to pick them up, ready for pushing upwards. Once again, we're going to let the hands completely relax. Down they come and then they sweep back round again to push down. If you sat down with me and you can push to either side, then do so. If you stood up, then you can either push to the sides or you can push directly down in front of you towards your feet. You've got the options. So there's our movements. Um, so what we'll do is we'll see if we can have a breath in as every time the hands return and get in position. And then we'll have a breath out. But if the breath runs out before we've reached the end of the movement, just breathe naturally. OK, let's see how we do. So here we go. We can have a big breath in. And then I breathe out gently as I push forwards. But if I need to take a breath in, I can do. And then I just relax. Maybe a few breaths in there. And then I'm picking my hands up with a breath in. Pushing out to the sides. Breathing out as I do so, but maybe getting another set of breaths in as we begin to reset. Get a breath in. Up overhead now. Breathe out. Push, push, push. Once again, just start breathing naturally as we reset and bring the hands down. And then maybe time and in breath. For the final push. Down like so. Okay, get the idea. So although we're thinking about the breath, again, we're not forcing the breath to, to um, coordinate with the movement. If we've run out of breath by the time we've done a part of the movement and we actually need to get another in-breath in, just do so. But we're beginning to bring the breath in in a more kind of meaningful way. Let's do another round before we finish. So here we go. In breath to get started. Out breath. Push with that breath. That's quite easy, that one. Maybe breathe naturally before we get ready to breathe in again. Push out to the sides with that breath. And it's the breath that's the driver. That's it. Once again, just naturally breathe before resetting with an in-breath to push up and then out. Once again, just relax, breathe naturally. Get a big breath in, ready for the push down. Down, down, down. Four directions. And that's it, again. No necessity to do lots of those, although you can do. Again, if you go nice and easy, maybe just focus on the movement and keep things nice and light, then you can do lots. If you want to put some intensity in there or turn the volume up, so to speak, then you can really imagine, as we have done previously, that we really push against some form of resistance. Right, let's close things because we've got to the top of the hour. So I'm going to bring my hands around. Could be an in-breath. And then we just let the hands drop very gently with that out-breath. Or again, just focus on the movement. All this talk of breath and breathing can all get a little bit onerous at times. 
So sometimes it's just nice to focus on moving smoothly and comfortably. I'm going to do one more circle. Only this time we just bring one hand onto the chest, one hand underneath on the lower abdomen. And again, 30 seconds, that's all. Just breathing. Rest your eyes if you wish and just be mindful without controlling that breath now. Just follow the rise and fall of the rib cage and the in and out of that breath. So that's all we need to do. Just a short little moment like that gives us a little headspace or breathing space. There you go. I'm going to let you carry on enjoying your summer's evening wherever you are. Hopefully it's nice wherever you are in the country. Uh, and we are back next week. So let me stop the recording. I will say... Goodbye to folk.